So this is a continuation from our lesson this morning on analyzing persuasive techniques and arguments using Romeo and Juliet. Uh, activity two focuses on a scene in act three. This is after Romeo has killed Tybalt and Lady Capulet's trying to convince the prince that Romeo should be punished for the death while Benvolio and Lord Montague argue that the prince should not punish Romeo. He was simply avenging the death of his friend. So the first thing we're going to ask our students to do is to paraphrase these lines in the margin. Uh, to cut down on time, you might ask the students to like assign two characters per group and let them work as a big group and just quickly run through and make a paraphrase of what each one's saying. The graphic organizer for activity B is a little bit complicated uh, when you first look at it. So I just wanted to kind of walk you through how it's laid out. It's laid out in columns that go down. So you have the character name in the top of each column. There's the Capulet, Lady Capulet, Benvolio, Montague. And then we also have the line numbers that we're specifically asking them to look at. And then you'll see that lines 169 to 170 still belong to Lady Capulet. Lines 148 to 150 belong to Benvolio. And Montague has no more lines, so that's the end of his argument. Um, so the first thing we want the students to do is we want them to go through and we want them to find the quote from 139 to 44, lines 139 to 44, that make the argument. So Lady Capulet's argument there is, Prince, as thou art true for blood of ours, should blood of Montague. Here she's using a fact. If we look at our um, appeals chart, we'll see that a fact is a logical appeal. Uh, she's asking him to keep his word. She says, you said, um, as thou art true. This, you, this is what you told us. So this is a logical appeal. And here we have the effect. What is the effect of the appeal? She gives the prince a reason to do what she wants him to do. You said to do this. So she's backing up her argument with this whole idea of this is what you said you would do. Uh, Benvolio comes back and he says, Romeo that spoke him fair, and then I skip some of the, the middle part, but urged with all your great displeasure. Romeo tried to tell Tybalt that the prince wouldn't want us to fight. So this is a fact. He's telling what Romeo said, but it's also, he's a witness. He's there. He sees it firsthand. Um, and so this could be logical or ethical. He observed it. He can speak as a witness to the scene. What effect is his argument? He makes Romeo sound like a victim. He just tried to do the right thing. Oops, misspelled. I'll fix that. Uh, he tried to do the right thing uh, and avoid the fight altogether, which is what the prince uh, had hoped for or had commanded. And then Montague says his fault concludes, but what the law should end. And this is precedent. This is common sense. He's citing authority, any of those devices that you choose. Uh, again, you're going to see there's a lot of times that a kid will argue it's either logical or ethical or even emotional because there's the overlap in those appeals. So as long as they can prove that it's logical or ethical, this depends on how they identified the device. If they said that this is citing authority, um, that could be ethical or that could be logical. And, and again, it just depends on how they cite the, the, or how they identify the device. The effect, it makes the action sound reasonable. Therefore, Romeo shouldn't be punished. Um, you were gonna kill him, any, you, were gonna, you were gonna kill Tybalt for Mercutio's death. Romeo just saved you some time, if you will. So as you look through, um, there's two more sets and you will just go through and have a quote, have your students enter the quote from those lines. Sometimes it's just those lines. And then identify the device. And remember, that's what we're looking for inside those um, logical, ethical appeals bubbles in the Venn diagram, if you will. And then what kind of appeal is it? Because again, a lot of times we're going to find that there's that overlap and we have to determine what kind of appeal it is. And then what is the effect that they're hoping to have on the prints? with this appeal. After they've gone through this section, we have a little break down here at the bottom before we start activity three, and it asks you to look back at the chart, and we want them to 
notice that for the most part, what kind of appeals does each figure use to persuade the prince? And so for Lady Capulet, she's pretty emotional in her argument. Benvolio and uh, Lord Montague, we see, are both um, very logical, and then they also call on that um, authority. And then question D, we want our kids to think about, is one person's argument more effective than another? Why or why not? So is fact or logic stronger than emotion? So in this case, it is. Is it always? No. And we want our kids to see that. So how do we know that it's stronger in this case? Who wins the argument? And that's what the next question is. So we know that the prince banishes Romeo. So Lady Capulet does not win with her emotional argument that he should be killed. Um, and to some extent, Benvolio and Montague win the argument because he is banished and he is allowed to live. So, sorry, I don't know why that continues to pop up on my screen. So we want the kids to, to just be reminded they're pleading that these characters are pleading their case to the prince um, and the prince will determine the fate of Romeo based on the strength of each argument. 